canals need a constant supply of water and when there were problems with the natural flows of water into the Crumford Canal, it was decided that a steam powered pump would solve the problem and the Leeward Pump House was constructed. My name is Ian Yates. I'm a member of the Middleton Top Engine and Leeward Pump Group. And the group is responsible for both the Middleton Top Engine and the engine down there, which you can see in the background, which is the Leeward Pump House on the Cromford Canal at Cromford. The pumping station that you can see was built in 1849 for the simple reason to supply water to the canal, specifically at times of um, drought when the natural feeds were low. When the canal was built, there was adequate water, mainly fed from the Cromford Sough and the Bonsall Brook, which were at the head of the canal uh, up by Arkwright's Mill in Cromford. Ongoing works by the local lead miners, building soughs, or better probably known as drainage channels, to get the water out of the lead mines, they got deeper and deeper, finally resulting in the Meerbrook Sough, which was quite a large one, which dropped the water level much lower. And that so the engine was restricted for taking water between midnight Saturday and midnight Sunday. It could only work during those hours. And to optimise the uh, quantity of water being pumped, that is why the engine is so large. It is capable and will, still to this day, lift 800 gallons per stroke working, we understand at that day, at seven strokes per minute. So you are lifting a considerable quantity of water in 24 hours. It takes a calculator to work it, but it is into the millions of gallons. The power of any steam driven system has to start with the steam generation, the boilers. There are two here at Leeward, and another of the volunteers, Ken Harwood, Tell us all about them. Yeah, well, I'm Ken, and I, I'm one of the volunteers that actually uh, maintain and run the, this pump house. We've been involved with it since about 1970s. Uh, and at the moment, I'm uh, looking after the boilers, raising steam, getting ready to run the engine for the day. Uh, these are not the original boilers that were built with the pump house, but they date from about 1900. And they're a Midland Railway design but not been built by the Midland Railway because they were very busy in Derby at the time. So these were made by Hawthorne Leslie up at Gateshead near Newcastle. And uh, they're a locomotive type boilers, obviously being a Midland Railway design. The only difference between these and a locomotive boiler is the width of the firebox. Uh, it would not fit into the frames of a locomotive. A locomotive firebox. Well, the coal that we bring down, it, we still fetch it by boat on the canal and tip it down the, the chute to the boiler house. And uh, it used to come from locally, there was a pit at Hartsey, and we assume that most of the coal used to come from there. And we burn roughly uh, about a tonne each day. John Reeve is another of the volunteers at Leeward, and he will take us through the operation of the pump house and what is here to be seen in the 21st century, starting with the engine. My name is John Reeve. I'm one of the volunteers who operate the, the pump. I've been coming here for over 30 years now. This is the engine. It was built by Graham and Company in uh, 1849. It was the Graham and Company were at the Milton Iron Works, which was at Elsica near Barnsley. The engine house consists of two halves. The engine to my left and the pump is on the right, connected by the beam across the top. So the layout here at Leeward is the boilers off to the side, the engine and pump on the ground floor, with a massive beam two storeys up along the top. The problem that we have to deal with at the beginning is that the first few strokes of the pump suck air. So we've got 15 tonnes of pump plunger sitting on top of a cushion of air. So I have to be very careful when I'm lowering the pump.
This is the beam that connects the engine to the pump. It weighs 27 tonnes and is cast, made from cast iron in two halves. Each end of the beam is equipped with watts parallel motion to convert the arc motion at the end of the beam to the straight line motion that is required for both the pump and the engine. Due to the massive size of the beam, the logistics of, of getting the beam into the building would have been fairly interesting. There are many different theories, but one possibility is that the building was built up to the floor level and then the beam was winched up the outside of the building and then transferred across onto the bearings. The water comes in through a tunnel from the river into a sump underneath the pump here. As the pump rises, it sucks the water through the inlet valve into the pump chamber. As the pump comes back down again, the outlet valve opens and the water is pushed up into the canal. As the pump rises, it sucks four tonnes of water out of the river. And as the pump comes back down again, the water is pushed through the outlet valve up into the canal. specifically designed on a huge scale to lift tons of water into the canal with each stroke. This is a very impressive example of simple but very effective Victorian engineering.